Hello and welcome to the final unboxing video and some channel announcements. Now you might be asking, why is this the final unboxing video? Well, uh, for one thing, uh, most of the items I'm going to be showing are things that have trickled in over the last nine months. And there were items that I'd actually agreed to accept a long time ago before I actually ran out of space. <laughs> the second thing is I've had a bit of a change in strategy. So used to, I would hoard like anything somebody would offer to donate to me because I might be able, or I might need to use that thing in a video in the future. But uh, that was before we had this really good interconnected group of uh, collectors here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So now that I'm really connected with these other people, um, it works out better for me just to borrow things from those collectors uh, to do my videos on and then return them. That way I don't have to store them here at the house. So does that mean I won't be taking any donations anymore? Well, not exactly. What it does mean is that I will only be taking donations of things that I'm going to use more or less right away in a video that I have like immediate plans for. And also I've sort of made it clear um, to a lot of uh, recent donors that have offered me things. I've said, well, look, I don't have the room to keep this, but I know these collectors in the area that would like to have this or that or whatever. And if you want to send it to me, I will go ahead and donate it to that person. And then uh, the upshot is that I get to use it whenever I need it because I can just borrow it from that person who has it in their collection. So um, a lot of the things that people are donating to me now are actually I'm just like an intermediary. It's coming to me and then I'm giving it to somebody else. Um, so of course I make people aware of that, but it just means it won't be staying here at my house in my own collection. And the other announcement I need to make has to do with the coronavirus. So it's actually had quite an effect on events scheduled for uh, retro gaming and retro computing and things like that. For one thing, I had plans this year to appear at events in Dallas and New Jersey and Long Island and the Netherlands, and those have all been either canceled or rescheduled, and many people are asking me about appearances, so I want to direct you to my website. I've always had a little section called Scheduled Appearances, which detail my plans for the year, and um, I keep this updated with any changes as soon as I know them, so please just check there to see what the latest plans are. The other thing I'll mention is that I finally completed my video catalog on my website as well. So you can see all episodes based on various topics. So this should make it easier to look up videos on your favorite topic. And um, I even have a section showing all of the videos that have had uh, guest stars or collaborations with other YouTubers. And so now let's get to the unboxing. The first package here is from Daniel in the Netherlands. And if you look at the postmark, you'll see just how long ago this was sent. And um, what we have here is a small cosmetic piece to a Compact Portable 3, which I plan on restoring here eventually. Next up, we have a package from Jacob in New Zealand. And what do we have here? Ah, uh, yes, um, this is basically an XT IDE card with a built-in Compact Flash Reader. Now, this is very handy, and I've actually been using this in my Commodore PC-20 for the last few months, and it works great. So, um, a big thanks to Jacob. This next package is from Jacob Nelson. I also received this quite a while ago. So what we have here is a Casio QV11, which is basically the first ever digital camera. Okay, maybe not the first, but you could say the first that actually takes the recognizable form and design of a modern digital camera. LGR and I had planned to meet up and do an episode together on this before the whole coronavirus thing came along. So. That's been put on hold for now. Nevertheless, uh, thank you very much, Jacob. Okay, here's a package from The Future Was 8-Bit. And again, this came in sometime last year, and I'm just getting around to showing you the unboxing. Uh, so what we have here is an SD to PET, and uh, it's basically an SD card reader that imitates a floppy drive for Commodore PET computers. And I've already tried it on my PET, and it does work, so um, this is a great device for PET owners. We've got a pretty big box here. This is from Steven Yaki, and um, that's interesting. A beetle mouse. <laughs> it's kind of weird because the box says it's for PC compatibles and is a serial mouse, yet down here it says Amiga, which is totally incompatible. And an RF shield. <laughs> Looks like something bigger in here. So skipping forward here, I have everything unboxed, and he sent me a whole bunch of Amiga stuff, including this Amiga 500 that needs some restoration work. Also included is some sort of card for an Amiga 2000, perhaps? I think it's a SCSI card. And this looks like a RAM upgrade and real-time clock for an Amiga 500. With a lovely corroded battery, which is very typical. At least it isn't on the motherboard where it can cause serious damage. And here we have a SCSI adapter for an Amiga 500. And of course an external floppy. All very cool stuff. Thank you, Steven. 
Next up we have a box from Mega Cat Studios. This is probably a game they're wanting me to review, but um, for the time being I really don't plan on doing any more game review videos since it seems nobody ever watches them. Looks like this is a game called Billionaire Banshee for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Looks interesting. And here we have a big box from Steven Lubars. I'm sure you're wondering what this could possibly be. <laughs> this predates most of the stuff I work with on my channel. Uh, this is a portable teletype machine. This is sort of predates the dumb terminal. And um, it's just a keyboard with a printer built in. It's actually called a mini term. And uh, it definitely has a look of the early 1970s, but I'm not really sure when it was made. On the rear, it has a built-in acoustic coupler, so you can use this on the go, as well as a serial port. Very neat. Thank you, Steven. And here is yet another box from Mega Cat Studios. And <laughs> I'm sure there's another game in here, and since I probably won't be reviewing it, I can at least show the box here. Uh, looks like he sent me a little note. That's some very nice handwriting. And the game is called, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, Devwell 2? <laughs> it appears to be for the Sega Genesis. Well, looks interesting, but like I said, I'm done with game reviews for a while, so um, maybe I'll get a chance to play around with some of these eventually. Next up is a box from Robert Kranicki. Okay, I think I remember this email. So uh, what we have here is another XT-IDE interface, but this one is designed specifically to fit in a Tandy 1000EX or HX on those proprietary slots in the back. And it has a compact flash slot built right in. Um, this is fantastic, and I can't wait to put this in my Tandy 1000HX. I actually sold the EX a while back, so um, that's the only one of that form factor I still have. Um, thank you, Robert. And here's something from Parafractic. So it took me a moment to figure out what these are for. Um, they're designed to go into a Commodore 64 and allow you to alternate between PAL or NTSC system at the flick of a switch. I could certainly see that being handy. Uh, thank you, Parafractic. Next up is a box from James Grover. These look like regular five and a quarter inch floppy disks, but they're actually hard sectored, which I'll explain in a later video I'm planning to do on unusual media formats. <laughs> and um, also a box of eight inch floppy disks. <laughs> you can see the size comparison. Uh, thank you, James. And next we have a box from Benjamin Day. And what we have here are more floppy disks. Um, but uh, these have one little unusual thing on them. Uh, notice that it says they are 500k disks, but formatted capacity of 360k, which is absolutely normal. But if you look at the actual individual disks, they're labeled as 500K, which could be confusing to some people. So I thought these would also be an interesting addition to the unusual media formats video. Moving along, we have a box from Mati Reinecke in Finland. This is a very unusual box. I think I'm supposed to cut along the curve here. All right, got that separated. Now let's have a look. Keep up the good work. <laughs> okay, I'll try. So uh, what we have here is a game from the 1990s, I think, uh, called Barcode Battler. And I've never heard of it before, so maybe it was only sold in Europe and Scandinavia, but um, apparently it relies heavily on a barcode scanner to play the game, and I thought it might be a fun review. We'll see. Uh, thanks, Mati. And now we have a box from Jonathan Goslin. What is all this? Okay, um, I see cassette tapes. These look like they're all for the Sinclair Spectrum, but uh, the other one says Timex Sinclair. Well, digging a little further, I see that it isn't all cassettes. In fact, there are quite a few things here, including what appears to be an entire Timex Sinclair 2068 unit. I already had one of these, but I didn't have any of these ROM cartridges, which are pretty rare. These actually go into this little slot right here, like so. Um, the other thing I didn't have was the user's manual or any of the software. So now I'm finally ready to do a full documentary on this system. Uh, thank you, Jonathan. Okay, we have a big U-Haul box here from Michael Eggers. And here's a note telling me everything in this box, and it appears to be a lot of Famicom stuff. So after getting it all unpacked, uh, here's the Famicom, but you may notice it has this disk system cartridge installed. And of course, here's the actual disk drive. And there are um, also some included games that load from disk. Oh look, it can run from batteries. Uh, that's unexpected since the Famicom would still need to be plugged into power. Anyway, uh, thank you Michael for this rare item. And this is the last box, and it's from John Simonski. So this will be the last unboxing item ever, unless something changes with my storage situation. Okay, so um, I'll need to skip forward a bit, and um, so what we have here is an Amiga 1200, which was sitting on top of an Amiga 500. 
with a broken key apparently. <laughs> I think both of these will need some pretty serious cleanup and restoration work, so don't be surprised to see a restoration video on the 1200 at some point. Um, I do plan to finish the Commodore History series uh, this year with the Amiga being the final episode, and I need a working 1200 to show. Oh, and um, he also sent along a bunch of software on floppy disk. Uh, thank you very much, John. And so that wraps up this final unboxing video, and um, I did want to mention that I actually do like these regular channel updates, usually about once a month just for my Patreon supporters, uh, where I just kind of give a little bit of behind the scenes, what's going on, videos I'm planning to make, challenges I'm having, even personal issues sometimes. Um, so if you know you like seeing channel updates, uh, one dollar will get you in the door to see all those videos. And uh, to quote another famous YouTuber, but that's it for the moment. So. Uh, Thanks for watching.